Fellas, AC here, welcome to another review. I just choked on myself. I've got this fragrance here, which happens to be my very first full bottle niche fragrance, full retail as well. Amouage Epic Man. This fragrance is ooh, truly, truly epic. This one spray is good enough. And you saw the spray, right? It's a pretty decent spray. So, the story about this fragrance is, when I was getting into niche fragrances, I was a little bit skeptical because I didn't quite understand niche perfumery. And I'm talking about proper niche fragrances. So I was sticking with fragrances which smelled sort of linear. This is my first proper complex niche fragrance. Now, when I first got the bottle, I got it on a whim around Christmas time from Harrods, full retail just because I was in that kind of a mood. I just wanted to buy an Amouage. I'd heard things about Amouage, but I wasn't very sure. I had heard things about Silver. My friend really used to praise Silver. Silver smells more like um, uh, one of the Creed fragrances, which I can't remember. It's more Juniper Berry. It's more 80s masculine fragrance. Now this one here, when I first got it, I got it on a whim, Christmas time. And then suddenly I realized this fragrance is too much for me. It actually is very high in a few notes, which sort of confused the mind. And that's what happened to me. But later on, I got used to it. And I personally think this is the most finest leather sandalwood amber combination out there. More oriental, right? So let's start the review. Now, look at the bottle. It's green in color. It says a lot about the fragrance. So this came out in 2009, maybe, 2010. The Baphomet, she's amazing. Randa Hamani, she hasn't done much work as far as I'm concerned, as to my knowledge. I haven't tested anything from Randa apart from Epic. And Epic is sort of trying to do the Oriental Silk Route thing. A lot of people say this is about journey of a tradesman. Could be, but this is actually um, inspired by Puccini's Turando. Puccini's Turando is about an old Persian folklore tale about the princess who used to ask three questions, you must have heard the story, to her suitors and most of them would be killed because they couldn't answer. And then um, one prince finally comes along and Turando uh, is taken. Yeah, that's the story. But the fragrance has got nothing to do with Puccini's Turanda as far as I'm concerned, although I'm not much into opera. But when you spray the fragrance, I'll try to I'll try and do my best to tell you about this complex fragrance. So imagine yourself standing by a waterfall and the whole area is surrounded by greenery, lush greenery, and then superimpose that image with the image of a spice market, literally. So you can imagine all sorts of spices, you know, cumins, chilies, mace, whatever you want to imagine, a dry spice market, and boom, place it on top of that. That's one aspect of the fragrance, the green, lush environment with dry spices. And then comes in that body odor, which is why Epic is not much loved. There's a terrific smell, very strong smell of cumin in this fragrance. And that body odor smell is sort of mixed with the smell of civet. Now, Arabian perfumery, and Rhonda is doing uh, an oriental here. Arabian perfumery for the thousands of years has been famous for using animalic secretions. I'm pretty sure it's not real animalic secretion here, not real civet cat here, but they've been using animalic secretions, fluids, and they're diluted. It smells very vile if you smell castorium or civet, but they dilute it like a thousand times and it produces this most amazing hallucinogenic um, sort of seductive smell, which makes a fragrance completely three or four dimensional kind of smell. It's just depth and amazing scent. So it's very rich. And now I'm getting hints of oud, Hence, many, many facets in this fragrance. Leather, sandalwood, cardamom, green cardamom, mace, um, obviously body odor, um, the creamy, buttery, salty olibanum mixed with 
some incense, you know, it's a very complex fragrance. It's really one of those fragrances that you have to be up for the experience. And that's how it begins, that's how it stays for about 20 minutes or so. That greenness that I mentioned is mostly myrtle and myrtle is endemic to North Africa. I'm talking about, you know, the entire Saharan desert north of Africa, anywhere you go, you know, from Morocco to Algeria, it's endem endemic and it has this beautiful sweet green smell. And that's what you get, the sweetness here is there. And this opening is just amazing. If you want to experience complex, multifaceted, multi-layered fragrance, Epic Man is just awesome. When the fragrance goes into its dry down, 20-25 minutes, it brings in the floral aspects, very lush floral. And this rose in here, mostly sweet florals, very, and rose obviously is very central to Arabian perfumery, so you have rose, and then in the dry down, there are two notes which I can pick out. There's a little bit of food, but there's amazing supple leather, and that's mixed with an outstanding note of tobacco, and sandalwood, sandalwood and saffron as well. I get a lot of, I'm getting a lot of saffron, beautiful, sweet, rich, opulent saffron. This fragrance is one of the most amazing multi-layered experiences you'll have. Full stop. It's an amazing fragrance. The cleanliness of saffron is mixed with the dirtiness of musk and obviously civet. That's why it's animalic. And there's olibanum as well. You can see so many notes. It's just a, a fantastic psychedelic effect. This fragrance creates stunning oriental. Amazing. So upsides and downsides. Number one upside. Uh, what a fascinating scent this is. The materials are amazing. This fragrance is stupendous. Really good. Complexity. If you like complex fragrances, if you have the patience and the courage to wear complex animalic fragrances, you will have a real good time. Downsides. Now those are two upsides. You know, third one I would say is real value for money. You know, homage is not cheap, so you're going to spend about 250, 100 ml. You're getting a terrific multifaceted experience. You know, complex perfumery. So those are the three. Great value for money. If you like animalic, if you like. Um, complex fragrances. Now downsides. Number one downside is that body odor smell. It's very strong. Sweaty armpit is the smell. It's mixed and it's it won't escape you till about fifth or sixth hour, right? So it's all the way that body odor smell is there and it's more pronounced when it's warm. At the moment it's quite cold. Six, five, six degrees. So that's the downside. Number one. That's what puts people off when, it, when they smell Epic. Epic has a serious sweaty armpit smell. Number two, it's animalic. The, the civet cat, the oud, they have a little bit of a stench. It's so beautifully concealed. As I said, the, the whole purpose of using animalic notes is not to make the smell filthy. It's to give that third dimension to it, the depth, the gorgeous, um, sort of erotic almost smell to it. It's really, really something else. So you have to really experience this. This is terrific fragrance. So those are two downsides. Longevity, it's about seven to eight hours. This is not a beast mode fragrance. You can't be, until unless you go two or three sprays. I always go one. I mean, look at this. This bottle is more than 11 years. This is how much I've used. And I must have worn at least two to three dozen times. I never go more than one spray. It's just not amazing. It, the experience is too much, you know. It's very intense fragrance, but it doesn't last that long. So seven hours of longevity, you would say. Maybe longer in, if you live in a warmer country. Siage, medium to low. This doesn't go and punch out. I've worn it outside as well on winter coats. It doesn't go and disturb other people. It's very medium. It's kind of confined. You have person has to be close to you. Longevity, uh, siage, again, medium to low. This doesn't create a scent bubble. As far as I'm concerned, I only wear this in winter because of that body odor smell, that civet cat, that uh, you know, smoky, intense oud sometimes I get. So for me, this is a winter smell. I love the green cardamom here. I love them. Uh, fantastically lush, myrtle, excuse me, mixed with leather. It's just beautiful smell. So, um, what else am I missing? Weather, winter. This is a through and through cold weather fragrance. Hot weather is just not for it. The creamy sandwich supports hot weather wearing. 
but that body odor smell will come off too strong and the leather as well leather comes and really dominates the scent um occasions i would say black tie this is a proper dress up scent you're going to a very niche sort of an environment invitation only kind of an environment if you're not going to such environments you're in your company you're reading a lovely book watching television that sort of thing you know or people who you are going out with know you that kind of thing people shouldn't think that you're wearing uh, you know a shirt you've worn five times that kind of thing so that's the thing about variability low variability um compliment factor i haven't received any compliment but this smells absolutely divine this smells amazing but i've never received a compliment wearing this fragrance i've worn it a lot um what do i think about the price point i've told you this is high value for money for people who like complex orientals marks are 10 low variability very complex beautifully made creative artistic amazing fragrance so middle ground 7 out of 10 i would say 7 out of 10 is a fair marks for this because it's expensive hard to wear low variability but on the other side of the scale very complex rich amazing arabian oriental perfumery one of the best in my collection so 7 out of 10 hope you enjoy the review fellas take care bye bye